Hi everyone, I'm Chris Nguyen. I'm the product manager for Windows Terminal. And for today's episode of Open at Microsoft, we're going to have Mike here walk us through walkthroughs. Hi everybody, I'm Mike. I'm an engineer on the Windows Terminal team. Glad to be here, Chris. All right, let's get started. Hey Mike, so um, one of the hot topics that keep coming up um, in our terminal, re terminal repo is walkthroughs. Can you tell us what those are? Yeah, so walkthroughs are something that we've been trying out for the last couple of months as a way of us on the terminal team sharing our mental map of the terminal code base uh, with the rest of the community, right? We've got a great community. We've got tons of users and they want to help with the terminal project. They want to help add their features. They want to help fix bugs. They want to help contribute to the Windows terminal. And we've tried, you know, tagging issues with like help wanted to show that those are good places for the community to give us a hand. We've even gone so far as to like have a good first issue tag that's kind of been used for like, if I think this is something that somebody who's never contributed to the terminal before, they might be able to help get started with that. But Chris, have you ever tried like submitting a PR to the Windows terminal before? Uh, I have, and honestly, it's it was kind of difficult just um, because I was a like a new first time contributor. And it was for me, like I'm not really like that well versed in C++ and you know, this is a new repo for me. So it was kind of hard to navigate um, and figure out which file did what. Well, of course. I mean, the terminal project is not super small. There's like a thousand lines of code, or not a thousand lines of code, a thousand files in our project, right? It's it's a big project. So even if, you know, I take an issue as saying, you know, this is a good first issue, that actually might not necessarily be true. I've been working in the code for eight years. I know like the back of my hand, but someone who's not worked in this code for a long time might have a hard time understanding where to get started with an issue. And that's mm -hmm. kind of really the whole idea of where walkthroughs came from was how do we share the mental map? You know, how would I get started? So I've kind of been going through some of our issues in a repo and I've basically just been posting that. How mm -hmm. would I get started working on this issue? So this is kind of an example of a walkthrough, right? I kind of just list off, I would start by looking at this file. I would go to this method in the file. I might add some enum values. I would go over here and I would do some parsing. Maybe I'd take a look at this other PR that might have some prior art that's very similar that you could edit. It's not me writing the code for you. It's more of just trying to share what my mental map of the problem space is so that you could take this and then immediately get yourself oriented in how to solve the problem and not have to spend all this time figuring out where to even get started, like parsing the settings, you know, stuff like that. Um, mm -hmm. So that's kind of what walkthroughs are. We've taken these and then I've collected all of these comments that I've written into a GitHub project. And if you're not familiar with GitHub projects, uh, they're kind of a new feature on GitHub that let you add arbitrary fields to issues and like collect them up in neat little views. So we kind of just stuck a, a difficulty field on some of these issues and then like here's a list of everything that's got a walkthrough written for it there's some easy ones and then some harder ones mm -hmm. um, and if anyone's interested in contributing to the terminal they can just go and pick one of these walkthroughs off and get started with that i'm actually really curious now so how do you decide like what feature or like what issue gets like a walkthrough it's been a little bit of a random process uh, we've kind of just gone through the the backlog of things that have been tagged help wanted. And, you know, if I ever think that one of those help wanted things does have really solid prior art, you know, something in the terminal code base that already does something like that, then that's a really good candidate for something that's uh, that could have a walkthrough. Because you can just point at, it's like this code that already exists, but just a little different, just tweak it. You know, that's a good place for walkthroughs. Um, sometimes it's, if I do end up tagging newer issues with help wanted, I'll just start right away by saying like help wanted and this is where I would get started. And mm. it's that mental map of like, just as long as I'm asking myself, how would I get started? 
then it's helpful to point people in that direction. Mm -hmm. I see. So going back to that mental math, like, um, you know, when you write these walkthroughs, do you always expect like um, every contributor to every contributor to follow the walkthrough line by line or are these more like recommendations on how to solve the problem yeah i would definitely recommend that they not follow it line by line you know it's supposed programming is an art form you know this is supposed to be just waypoints of how i would get myself oriented in the code base had i if i didn't know uh, mm -hmm. but people should totally feel free to just kind of start there and then find their own direction. You might find by the end of an issue that you've gone way off the rails or that I didn't necessarily know all the edge cases. And, you know, it's more of a, how would I get started so you can get started, but do whatever you want. Mm. Got it. So it's like, it's, it's, a starting point, not necessarily something like a, um, like a college assignment where like your professor lists you like, line by line what you need to do hey, yeah cool so um you know going back and um on like walkthroughs and contributors um what's like the impacts that walkthroughs have had on the um, terminal repo i think it's been great we've only been doing this for a couple of months we haven't really talked about them very much and we've already had like 15 20 contributions from the list of walkthroughs um, and a lot of these have been from people who never contributed to the terminal code base before, which is really great. And we had a couple of them even go off to then fix additional issues that weren't tracked by walkthroughs. Uh, we had someone come in here and do this really hard <laughs> task. And then they went off and like did three more features that built on top of this. Um, and th none of those had walkthroughs. So it was a really good way for people to get their feet wet in the terminal code base, so to speak, uh, get familiar, understand how to work here, and then like just kind of be creative after that, you know, do whatever felt right to them to help the terminal be better for themselves, you know. Uh, it's It's been really good. We had, I want to say, 20 PRs for the last release that were all from new contributors or people who had never contributed before uh in this uh for the terminal that's pretty nice um speaking of like the last release i remember that we had like a big community contributed feature in 1.17 that all started because of a walkthrough can you tell me more about that yeah uh this was one of our the first walkthroughs that was ever written and uh, it was, again, just a list of files, a list of, I would go add these classes, you know, it was following a spec that was already written this, for this feature. And, you know, FWS 98 down here was able to take this walkthrough and turn it into a PR, and they were able to add, you know, this, this feature, which was uh, the new tab menu customization. They did it just based off of this walkthrough, but then they went off and they also came up with like all these other new features or like usability improvements to this menu, like that we hadn't thought of that weren't a part of the spec. So it was really great experience to have them get started here, but then understand the problem space and then, you know, iterate on it and improve it with their own touch. You know, uh, it was, it was a really great experience. Yeah. Nice. So I guess I have one last question, Mike. Um, if I was an open source maintainer and I wanted to start doing walkthroughs, like what tips do you have for me to get started? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the main thing is to just when you are tagging these issues up and uh, you want to ask for community help, you know, leave a little note that just answers the question, how would I get started on this issue? Um, if you want to, you know, go all in and copy exactly what we've done, what we've done here is not something that's specific to the terminal. It's not specific to really anything at Microsoft. This is something that could be copied by anyone in the open source community. Um, and you can literally copy exactly what we've done. If you go up to this little menu on GitHub, uh, they've got this little make a copy button. And what that will do is literally just copy the exact format of this project board but without the issues in it. 
and it'll copy the fields that we've added here. It'll copy these little views that we've made and it will transfer that copy to you. So you can then go and add issues from your own project to something with the exact same format. Um, and then, you know, it's up to you. Just start going through your backlog and add notes. How would I get started? That's pretty cool. I get, so, and that also lets me copy like the difficulty difficulties also, right? Yeah. Nice. Yeah, the whole thing comes with. That's cool. Okay, so I think that's pretty much all the time we have today. Um, thank you so much for um, walking me through walkthroughs, Mike. Um, yeah, this was another episode of Open to Microsoft. Thank you for having us. Bye.